Welcome back friends. Uh, in this video tutorial we'll be talking about uh, the importance of uh, having all those photosystems or reaction centers in, in embedded inside the cell membrane of some bacteria which are called the purple bacteria. Now we have seen before that this purple bacteria can utilize uh, the electron or can have the electron from hydrogen sulfide or it can also have the electron from uh, elemental sulfur sometimes to uh, finally produce to reduce the carbon dioxide to organic carbon uh, and also sometimes it can uh, take this electron from hydrogen so depending upon the type of uh, electron uh, ex electron accept electron donor actually uh, we can divide this purple bacteria group of purple bacteria into two different parts one is uh, the purple sulfur bacteria another one is the purple non sulfur bacteria so let me take the color okay uh, blue color is fine yeah now purple sulfur bacteria or PSB and another one is that purple non sulfur bacteria PNSB now the purple sulfur bacteria can have the sulfur from H2 uh, can have the electrons sorry from H2S or sometimes from elemental sulfur uh, uh, but PNSB can have this from hydrogen compounds or hydrogen for example okay now we can see here uh, before understanding uh, the flow of electrons through the different electron carriers we must know some very basic and fundamental parts and that is the electronegativity and also uh, we, we need to need the reduction potential now what do we mean by a reduction potential for example uh, if we have A uh, it's a species of molecule uh, B is another species of molecule now A can reduce B so we can say that A is having the reduction potential for reducing someone else so if you have a reduction potential that means you can reduce others now if uh, now say uh, C is also there and it can also reduce B so C is also having some reduction potential but now uh, suppose we can see the reduction potential of A is higher that means A can reduce B further more than the C can reduce B okay just uh, just very just look at it and hear it very very carefully right because uh, reduction potential is higher that means a uh, no, uh, moiety can reduce others very very efficiently and rapidly okay now here is uh, the lining of different types of electron pot reduction potentials now if you are going towards negative that that doesn't mean the reduction potential is negative that means the electron reduction potential is electronegative now don't confuse the term electronegativity with this reduction potential electronegative now whatever we have i'm whenever we are, i'm i'll be saying like uh, reduction, reduction potential is, is electronegative that doesn't means we are talking about the electronegativity concept now remember the electronegativity concept states us that uh, that if we are having uh, the molecule a and b suppose and there is an electron cloud now if b is having the higher electronegativity that means it is having higher affinity towards uh, the electron okay that that is called the electronegativity which is simply the electron affinity for that molecule but okay but in this case we are not talking about that we will be talking about electronegative reduction potential that means uh, electronegative reduction potential so electronegative reduction potential means a molecule is is in its highest reduced state for example if I take a sulfur uh, elemental sulfur and we, we look for the reduction and oxidized step now the most reduced step of sulfur can be found in the molecule H2S okay so H2S is having the strongest electronegative uh, ele reduction potential among sulfur okay and the same way if we look for SO4 minus SO4 2 minus then we can find that this SO4 2 minus is the oxidized the highest oxidized test of sulfur that means it is having the highest electropositive uh, reduction potential so this highest electropositive reduction potential will be put in in this scale at this bottom and the uh, and the and the highest electronegative reduction potential can be put in this top so this is the varying portions okay so just make all these things clear otherwise you can't understand a single thing what i am going to say in the future okay fine if it's clear then we'll move on so let me delete uh, it is the color oh, there's no way of erasing the color okay anyways fine uh, 
okay uh, let me take this yeah fine okay now here <coughs> we can see uh, the scale of reduction potentials in volts which is you know to do it e0 dagger uh, e0 prime sorry now uh, now let us talk about uh, the pathway inside the cell membrane now in the cell membrane we must have the electron carriers because all this photosynthesis and also electron uh, all this uh, oxidative phosphorylation what we have seen in case of metabolic pathways all these things are dealing with the electron transfer now what is the basic goal of ours in this case is that we pr we, we must there are some chemical uh, molecules or molecules are there we, we can actually can be excited with the help of the light energy those are called the light harvesting molecules now, or, or they are also called the photopigments now they change uh, in their conformation and they can be excited to a, a higher exciting state and then when they come through this down, uh, come down to, to their lower excited state then they will release some energy and what we are doing we can gather that energy uh, and we can we are actually pumping out protons outside the cell membrane so suppose we are having this cell membrane we are embedding different electron carriers here okay now what we are doing uh, as uh, they are excited by uh, light and all these chemical modifications are actually happening right after that what is what they are doing they are actually transferring for example protons from inside the cell into the outside the cell now what they are doing by this they are storing protons outside and they are increasing the concentration of protons outside the cell then the inside the cell so it is eventually creating a density gradient of proton uh, inside and outside the cell now in this picture uh, if this is the outside region then the proton density outside the cell is higher than the proton density inside the cell so what will uh, the future prospects this proton can pump inside the cell and this energy of pumping the proton down their concentration gradient can help us to generate energy or ATP now this is the basic goal of uh, the light reaction on any light reaction of any kind of photosynthetic machineries you must produce ATP because ATP will be needed for uh, the further attachment or for for the reduction of CO2 into the organic particles okay now in this case what we are seeing uh, they must have different electron carriers now electron carriers can be uh, uh, carriers embedded or it can be carriers which are mobile now quinones are there which are uh, mobile electron carriers and uh, there are also different uh, embedded electron carriers now the embedded electron carriers would be the cytochrome bc1 cytochrome c2 and the mobile electron carriers are quinone a quinone b and all these things and also there are photoreactive centers now these photoreactive centers are important because this is the type of center which we cannot find in case of oxi oxidative phosphorylation because this is needed only in case of the photosynthesis and the examples are here is shown bchl that is a bacterial chlorophyll because we are dealing with uh, the uh, in purple bacteria and the bacteria pheophyte now bacteriophyophytin and bacteriochlorophyll are these light harvesting molecules or light reaction centers which can gather the light which can be excited by the photons of the light and they can they can be they can transfer the electron to a higher ele uh, electron state and then the electron will move into the lower state and then in this conformation shift can help them to store uh, proto uh, phot protons uh, outside the cell membrane okay so now let us look at the process this is the schematic presentation here will be seen uh, in detail later now here uh, the light will come here the LED or red or infrared light is shown because uh, purple bacteria are very very much sensitive to these lights now red and uh, infrared light will come and hit this photoreactivation center which is denoted with P87T now remember one thing there are many several different types of photoreaction centers embedded in the cell membrane one of them is P87T which is found in in case of purple bacteria now uh, this p870 is excited and as it is excited the electron is uh, moved towards the excited state and then the electron will be transferred from one to another electron carrier now we can see so here uh, it is excited into p870 then it will be transferred to the bacterial uh, chromes or, or, or photochromes now the photochromes like bacterial chlorophyll and also bacterial fighting so they will take up this by one by another and then uh, the, the transport chain is going on like this bacterial chlorophyll then bacterial fiophytin then to quinone 
which is a mobile carrier they carry the electron and and move from one to one place to another place up to the quinone pool or quinone pool in this quinone pool they are storing all those electrons and this from from this quinone pools again the electron is transferred to the cytochrome bc1 then cytochrome c finally so what we are doing in this case remember a uh, look at the picture very carefully we are uh, w in the first place we just moved uh, directly to the upper staircase and now we are uh, we are coming down uh, by one by one staircase down okay so we are not getting down like this directly that because this is not the thing which is going to happen the actual thing is that you must be elevated to the first staircase to the highest staircase then you will move down one by one you move down one after another okay it is not like that you're just directly getting this electron popped from this hi higher energetic state to the lower energetic state and you cannot find anywhere it is actually happening in all these places this is the rule that you uh, whenever you get excited you just uh, kicked out to the highest energy state and then you come down very very sequentially not very rapidly why because if we come down very rapidly in this case in those case there will be a tendency to huge loss of the energy as the for form of heat because heat uh, in in whatever energy we are dealing with uh, the energy must be lost as the form of heat okay but in this case also if we just uh, getting down directly you will you will lost enormous amount of energy as heat so uh, cell cannot tolerate that so they generate this sequential manner of electron handling uh, to this ground state because electron that are go kicked out must return the ground state for to carry out the further cycles because it's a cyclic process here cyclic electron flows here okay now uh, the basic uh, property or basic mechanism of transferring the electron lies uh, between uh, the concept i have taught you before uh, about the electronegative uh, reduction potential that whatever molecule is sitting here so if we're dealing with the purple sulfur bacteria if we take this h2s uh, which is the highest reduced state so so it will be placed at this top layer or the high high uh, electronegative uh, so H2S is having is this high electronegative uh, reduction potential, and in, on the other hand, we are having SO4 to minus, which is having the high electropositive reduction potential. Uh, so what we'll do in this case, so H2S is totally reduced form, and SO4 minus is totally oxidized form of sulfur. Now uh, what they are doing here, they are supplying the electrons. So H2S can supply many electrons because it is totally reduced, like so it is a it is having a ton of electrons to itself uh, so it can give it now the h2s uh, here uh H2S here, what we can uh, what we can see here in this case, so H2S can transfer the electron, so they they will give the electron to BCHL, then again BCH from BCHL to the BPA. So so the sequential manner is placed in the way you can see from the higher electronegative reduction potential towards the lower electronegative reduction potential. So the molecule which is having the higher electronegative reduction potential will pass the electron to the molecule which is having the lower electronegative uh, electron potential. Okay, and the, uh, uh, reduction potential, and that's how the cycle is completed. Okay, so if you are having the higher reduction potential, you pass the electron to the neighbor which is having the lower reduction potential of your cell. Okay, that's the basic thing and that's how uh, this process is actually done. Now let us move on to the next slides. Now this is uh, the process of how uh, this is happening actually inside the cell. So if I take a color and now let us look at here so light is coming the same process is shown here just uh, in the manner that is actually happening inside in, in the cell membrane now uh, in eukaryotic cells we can find this photosystems embedded in the totally separate uh, organelles called the chlor chloroplast or plastid but in this case of purple bacteria or some bacterial species uh, also uh, they can have these different types of system uh, embedded in their cell membrane now in the cell membrane they are having this light harvesting complexes or LH and they are having these reaction centers through uh, where uh, the transfer of electron from pH 72 uh, uh, totally high, higher region is actually happening and all those chromogenic molecules are there and uh, they are having all this embedded electron uh, carriers like FES or uh, BC1 and uh, cytochrome C2 complex and they are also having this quinones and quinone pool in between the region 
and they they are also having a very important protein here which is embedded which is a transmembrane type of protein it is called uh, the proton pump or ATP synthase now this ATP synthase will pump the proton and along with the proton pumping they can generate the ATP by attaching ad adenosine triphosphate and inorganic phosphate now what is happening here as you can see light is coming and it hits this light reaction or light harvesting center as and also it, uh, it, it is hitting the light uh, it is a reaction center and by hitting the reaction center it uh, stimulates uh, uh, the uh, electron from to to go into the higher energetic state uh, of p870 and when it moves to the higher energetic state the electron must be pa passed to the uh, next or, or the lower in uh, electronegative reduction uh, potential containing molecule now which is quinone in this case from bacterial chlorophyll then bacterial pheophytin which is placed here then finally to quinone and the quinone can move on from this reaction center to to the other electron carriers like bc1 and c2 now quinone can go to the bc1 and in between that we are having the quinone pool now the quinone pool is uh, maintained in a uh, sequent in a particular amount because if the quinone pool is disrupted then the transfer of protons to the outer surface or outer uh, to the outer region of cell will be halted right so that's why you need to maintain this quinone pool into a particular limit now quinone will go to the bc1 complex and through this B bc1 electron can pass through the iron sulfur cluster then to the another uh, mobile electron carrier which is the c2 now the c2 uh, you can see here it is uh, going to the reverse orientation or reverse direction it is going to the bc1 towards the reaction center to put this electron back uh, from where it originates okay so this is the cycle and BC uh, and the cytochrome C2 is completing the cycle of electron flow in this purple bacteria okay as we are transferring this electron from from one electron carrier to another electron carrier we are storing these protons on the outside region of uh, the cell which is the periplasmic space of the cell and as we are doing this we are gathering we are we are increasing the concentration of protons outside the cell in enormous amount and this higher uh, concentration outside and lower concentration inside is created a density gradient for proton now the proton can easily be pumped through this uh, channel of proton pumping station uh, from the outside the cell towards the inside the cell down their concentration gradient so we do not need energy but we can actually utilize uh, the this down the concentration gradient to produce some energy by attaching adenosine triphosphate and inorganic phosphate with each other to produce ATP Okay, and ATP is generated in this machinery via this electron uh, pool system or quinone pool or electron transfer system. Okay, so this is uh, what we have seen in all these cases of purple bacteria. But in case of purple bacteria, the electron donor in the very first electron donor will be the H2S. Okay, because H2S is acting as here, so they they will need the presence of H2S for their reaction. Uh, after all this reaction, they will produce SO4 minus. So SO4 minus, as uh, it cannot live on its own, so it will react with H2O and it can form H2SO4. So if we look at this purple bacteria, uh, especially the sulfur uh, purple sulfur bacteria or so PSBs, we can find the presence of acid uh, in their environment where they live in. So most of them are acidophiles. So this is the re reason why they become the acidophiles because they can generate this acidic environment outside their cell because uh, all the sulfur are oxidized and after the sulfur oxidation it will convert itself to sulfate. Okay, so that's it and I hope it will help you. Thank you.